President Trump weighing in on Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore for the very first time. I can tell you one thing for sure. We don't need a liberal person in there, a Democrat, Jones. I've looked at his record. It's terrible in crime. It's terrible in the border. It's terrible in the military. I can tell you for a fact, we do not need somebody that's going to be bad on crime, bad on borders, bad with the military, bad for the Second Amendment. The president's comments coming on the heels of a Congressional Ethics Committee launching an investigation into longtime Democratic Congressman John Conyers after he reportedly settled a wrongful dismissal complaint for more than $27,000 in taxpayer money after a former female staffer alleged that she was fired in 2015 because she would not, quote, succumb to his sexual advances. Conyers has expressed, quote, expressly and vehemently denying the allegation in a statement. Uh, this all unfolding, of course, as several left-wing activist groups are now demanding Democratic Senator Al Franken resign after two women have come forward to accuse him of sexual misconduct. To my panel now, Tammy Bruce, Fox News political contributor, member of the Independent Women's Forum Board of Directors, and a Washington Times columnist, Liz Peake, a columnist for the FiscalTimes.com and a contributor to The Hill, and Ashley Pratt, a contributor to the U.S. News and World Report. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me start with you, Tammy. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, it's just all coming as an avalanche. It's like two or three a day, but now the names are huge. Yeah. Al Franken, a U.S. senator. Mm -hmm. uh, Conyers, one, one, the oldest serving Democrat in, in Congress. And, uh, and, and, of course, now the, the, the interesting part, uh, the more, uh, another uh, aspect of this, mm -hmm. rather, is taxpayer money being used as hush money to, right. uh, for it all. Yeah, social media is now calling it shush money. Uh, the fact is, though, it, everyone is wondering, of course, if this avalanche would just affect Hollywood, right? Well, clearly, it's in every industry, uh, and we're looking at industries where there's a significant power and significant money at their disposal. So we're seeing this now. It's not a surprise, especially since we also know Congress has a list over the, about the last 15 years where we've paid about 15 million dollars in no, no, shush money. 17 million dollars. Uh, it's 17 uh, now. Yeah. So, so this is where. We we know that for every year, money has been paid out to accusers quietly. We still don't know the names on that list, which means there are many more that would come if women, of course, apparently, Nancy Pelosi says they've signed non-disclosure agreements. Uh, I think, though, as we've seen in these other cases, uh, that might not necessarily be adhered to because of the nature of, of this kind of volcanic er eruption of, of accusations and situations. You know, of course, uh, it was only a few weeks ago where Democrats were demanding Republicans uh, ask Roy Moore to get out of the race, Liz. Uh, and, and of course, I haven't seen an elected Democrat uh, demand that Al Franken step down. And it's yeah. kind of early for Conyers, but we haven't seen that either. Uh, wh what do you make of the idea that, okay, you know, someone who wasn't even elected yet on 40-year-old <laughs> charges was being demanded to drop out of a race, where now you have two sitting uh, highly, formerly highly respected uh, senator and congressman uh, who are in some serious hot water, and yet there's not a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, it's a pretty embarrassing moment, I think, uh, all around. And in fact, I saw Liz Warren sort of dance around this question today. Someone asked her, do you think that Al Franken should resign? And she really couldn't bring herself. He, Liz Warren, the great champion of women's rights and women's movement and so forth, she could not bring herself to say yes. It's all about politics, Charles, and it should not be about politics. This is not left and right. This is what's right and wrong. And in the case of... Uh, uh, Franken and Conyers, you know, it's just the beginning, I think, of people coming out to make these accusations. In the case of Roy Moore, at least you have the opportunity there for the voters of Alabama to make their decision. And my guess is, you know, I always think voters are pretty smart. My guess is they'll make the right decision in that case. Uh, but, you know, to leave these other two in place, and particularly this offensive thing of taxpayer money being paid out, it's, it's pretty abhorrent. Ashley, your thoughts? Now is not the time for hypocrisy or for partisanship when it comes to these allegations of sexual assault. I think there needs to be a clear message sent by the Hill and by especially the women on the Hill to say enough is enough. None of this partisan crap that we're seeing going on right now, and excuse my language, but that's what it's coming down to. When it comes to this Roy Moore instance, you know, we're seeing Democrats calling for Roy Moore to resign, but yet we're not seeing it when it comes to, you know, Al Franken or Conyers and all of these other uh, sitting senators. So I really think at this point in time, and this is happening with Republicans too, Trump should be saying that Roy Moore should get out of the race, but he doesn't want a liberal in there instead. We 
need to say enough is enough as a country. We need to say enough is enough as women because for years sexual assault has just been swept under the rug and now that all of this is coming to light, it's really exposing the dark underbelly of media, of politics, and of sexual assault in general and how this has been so pervasive in our culture, but we've just turned a blind eye to it. If I could just add, the president is moving, I think, on Liz's point, whereas it is appealing to the fact that these individuals in Alabama will be voting, and that's an argument that you can make about people having to make that choice. But let me also just say that this is clearly nothing new. I think this began the argument politically with Bill Clinton. The Democrats have constantly made it a partisan issue. They've regularly lied to the American people. Their movement as feminists have been that, fraud. Though, but yes, indeed. And of course, we want it to change. But the fact of the matter is, to expect the Democrats, women or men, to suddenly find their spine and be against this when they've been the ones who have facilitated it for 25 but years, when, when they fought we, for Republicans, Bill Clinton though, and defended Bill Clinton's actions. Can me stand there this and say, is where this is hypocritical. If we're going to sit here and say they did this, but now it's but, okay but for the but president the, not but we've to address to it understand the real nature of, of the animal and what they've been doing for a quarter of a century. I understand the, the real nature of the animal to be to sexual change, assault. And, we've got to call them and on if it. we expect the president to do that right now, we, we can look we, back on Democrats and say the same thing with the Clintons. Uh, yes, Ashley, but why don't we change that? Let me jump in here for a second, ladies, and just ask, uh, are, will there be a set of game rules on how to go about this? Or uh, you know, to, to someone step down from an office that they've held for a long time after one accusation, two, three, four, five, after physical evidence, uh, he said, she said, or should uh, any accusation make someone abandon a job that they pursued for a few decades or a job no, that they've I had for a few decades? And Charles, I am not calling for that. What I am saying is, you know, if it, if it has been investigated and it is proven that there has been wrongdoing, then I think at that point there needs to be a larger conversation here. And clearly what we're seeing are multiple instances of this with the same person. So I think at this point when we're looking at these settlements where taxpayer dollars are being used, when we're looking at multiple women coming out against one person, clearly there is a pattern of behavior there with that specific individual that should be looked at and should be treated as such. Right. And I, I think... Let me bring Liz in for a second. Liz, yeah, well, before you jump in, I do yeah. want to let the audience know about the Congressional Non-Accountability Act. So you know, you've got Congress, which already can do things like trade illegally <laughs> right. trade. Right. And they can do things we don't do. They can give us Obamacare, but they don't take it. I mean, across the board, even when it comes to something like this, they have built themselves a moat, if you will, uh, where, they yeah. don't, where they cannot be legally held accountable for actions that would put a lot of other people in prison. It's pretty extraordinary, and I think we could start with greater transparency, right? I don't think there should be shush money, as Tammy refers to it, paid to basically get people off the hook. That's money that we are paying the federal government. It's not supposed to be going in this direction. But, but I think it's the honesty issue that is so, again, so offensive here. Uh, enable Hillary. We just, after all, the major Democratic uh, candidate in the last election was an enabler for her husband, Bill Clinton. And now everyone's sort of looking back 35 years, 40 years, and saying, "Oh, we we really should have been, uh, you know, right. harder on Bill." I guess a little too little, too late. But it, it, it to is your point, it's not one size fits all. They have to be individually investigated, but there have to be some standards. I think yeah. that's totally right. And, you know, it is interesting. Yeah. Of course, now it is really easy for the Democrats to to to, to, to throw Hillary mm -hmm. under the bus and to, and now they're indicting. Bill Clinton. A little bit late you now, Kirsten yeah. Gillibrand, some people are hailing her as a hero. It's, it's again, you know, she took the money, she took the fame, she took yeah. the favors, and it's easy now to dismiss them. And, and, and uh, Senator Gillibrand has done the same thing that uh, Warren did. Uh, she was asked about Al Franken after saying Bill Clinton should have resigned, yeah. and she danced around that because now they've just, they're going to have ethics hearings, which is, we know, go nowhere. Uh, oh, I think that the long, excuse me, I think that the long-term dynamic here is that it is a generational framework of those individuals will have to be swept out at one point and have an elect new people uh, in, in that understand what the difference is and remake this government. And we, we, when we talk about the swamp, right. this is part of it. Right. And of course, ladies, well, I know there's a lot of passion here. We, we, we've run out of time. And believe me, I understand completely. And, and I will say, I will say that obviously there need to be rules, new, new rules established, new standards established, and at least at this period in time, maybe uh, it would be a chance for the entire country to, to, to be introspective and, and yeah. do the right thing going forward. And Thank more you. transparency. Transparency is part yeah. of it. Thank and you all very much. And more bipartisanship.